Hi booktube, it's Missy and today I'm going to be doing my very last, if you can see that, my very last shelf, we're going to call it shelf 12 of my bookshelf tour 2015. Um, I'm going to be doing this into two parts because over on this side I have classics and then everything else is in the horror genre. I might even do it in three parts because this whole section here is horror with monsters and this is all horror with like serial killer people kind of horror. So maybe three parts. It'll be like 12A, 12B, 12C. I don't know how I'm going to do it yet. I will obviously put it in the description box once I have the video up. Before I get started, I did receive two packages today, so I wanted to share those with you right now. The first one is from an author, and uh, she contacted me a few days ago, was it a few days ago? Maybe, maybe, and asked if I could read it for October, and I said yes. Ooh, it's got, it's got worms in here. So, here's the the worms. Mm, it smells really nice too. Yay! Okay. So the book that was in the package is The 52nd by Della. This is a paranormal mythology book about um, like the Aztec and Mayan culture. There is a like immortal that is supposed to collect 52 souls every, or not souls, but 52 people to make, or to turn into sacrifices every 52 years, and the immortal that has to do it um, goes to collect uh, a girl named Zara and um, decides that he doesn't want to add her to the sacrifice number because he's been dreaming about her for 300 years, so I don't know if this is going to turn into kind of like a romance, um, but it does sound intriguing, and I can't wait to read it, and it is signed, Ooh. it says, Melissa, best name ever, enjoy the thrills by Della, her real name is Melissa, and so that's exciting. I also got a bookmark, which she has also signed, so thank you, thank you, Della. I cannot wait to read this. Ah, oh, it smells so good, like the, the worms that were inside the package, like perfume. All right, the second thing I got, I believe, is my book. Um, so this is a company called Red Bubble, and if you go on to this website, you will be lost in there forever. They have millions and millions of prints, like just from all these different artists, and if you click on an artist, it'll show you all of their prints that they have done. For the website you can get stickers you can get um what i this is going to be a hard cover journal you so you can get stickers journals t-shirts um prints for your wall pretty much anything mugs anything with whatever print you like you can get it on whatever you want and so this is supposed to be unless it, this is my husband and then i'm just gonna cut this from the video this is supposed to be my hard cover journal that i uh ordered so, very excited to share with you guys that um, I just heard of bullet journaling last week. I didn't even know what that was. But instead of bullet journaling with like the washi tape and making my own lines and stuff, I figured I would just make a journal. Just doodles and things that I was thinking about that day. Kind of like a diary, but not. Just a little bit more creative. Um, I'm really excited. And yes, it is my journal. It's a lot tinier than I expected it to be. Um, so cute. So we have Edgar Allan Poe, my one of my favorite authors. Let me just open this. Wow, that's really loud. Open it up. And there are three kinds of journals that you can get. You can get ones that have lines, ones that are blank, and ones that have um, like graph paper inside. I purchased the blank one so that way I could doodle wherever I wanted. Um, I'm really excited. The paper is a little bit thicker than um, computer paper. I would say it's like the thickness of construction paper. 
So yeah, I'm really looking forward to um, writing in this one. And if you want, I will leave the link down below. It is a very fun site to just browse around. This was $20. And so yeah, hardback. I love it. I love it. What else came in here? I think a sticker. Yeah. There's the company logo, red bubble sticker. All right, so let's get on with the classics. See you in a minute. Okay. As you can see, this is the overview of my 12th shelf. Um, so for this part, I'm only going to be doing the classics there. So let me pull them down. That way I can put them back up. Okay, so the first book, oops, the first book I have here is George Orwell's 1984. I have not read that yet. Let me just stick them here. Next I have Weathering Heights by Emily Bronte. This is an illustrated copy, so it does have pictures in it. Not very many, but it does have some. Next we have we have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. I love this cover. And I think Penelope and I are going to be reading this uh, next month. And then I have The Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad. This is actually a band book. It's not that long either. Maybe I'll read it. I don't know. We will see. And then I have The Odyssey by Homer. I'm really excited to read this book. It's an epic poem. And then I have A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. And 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea by Jules Verne. And I have Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Then I have On the Road by Jack Kerouac. Kerouac? I think that's how you say it. I also have... Ooh, I'm out of focus. I have Metamorphos by Ovid. And then I have The Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. And then I have The Giver by Lois Lowry. This is another band book. This is a middle grade um, dystopian. Alright, then I have The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. I read this in high school, but I do want to reread it. Um, I didn't like it in high school, so I'm hoping that I'll like it as an adult. And then I have The Swiss Family Robinson by Johann David Weiss. This is my husband's copy. Um, it's really old. I don't even know what this is about. And then lastly, I have To Kill a Marking... To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. Uh, another book I didn't have to read in high school, but I do want to read it. And this is another banned book. All right. <laughs> Let's just drag this back, shall we? So these are all of my... All of my classics. Um, this little section here is all of the graphic novels that I have already read, um, but that wouldn't fit on my red shelf. And then I have two, um, two non-fictions about Jane Austen and a graphic novel of Frankenstein, which I have not read yet. So let me just show you really quickly those covers. So I have Jane Austen, Her Life, Her, no Her Times, and Her Novels by Janet Todd. This also includes a removable facsimil document. Um, I'm really excited to read that one.
And then I have my, let me, I can put it closer, my Jane Austen cover to cover, 200 Years of Classic Covers by Margaret C. Sullivan. This is a table book that I received from Penelope for Christmas. I absolutely love looking through this nonfiction. It just shows you, like it says, all the different kinds of editions of covers that has been put for Jane Austen's books. And then lastly, um, this is Gris Grimley's Frankenstein. Um, I bought this as a scratch and dent from Book Outlet, so it doesn't have a dust jacket, but it is really pretty inside. So it's a graphic novel of Frankenstein, which I cannot wait to read. I want to read the original first before I pick this one up so I can enjoy it. Um, more. Okay, and then on to my um, red graphic novels. The first one is a series, which is Morning Glories Volume 1, Morning Glories Volume 2, and Morning Glories Volume 3. If you have not read that graphic novel series yet, I would definitely recommend doing so. It's really good. It's a paranormal... Uh, how can I explain it? It's paranormal, and it's about kids in a, like a boarding school or a finishing school, something like that, and they all have the same birthday, and they're all being used for some kind of... Not experiment, but it's they're used for something, and I haven't gotten to that yet. I believe it's going to start appearing more in Volume 4 on why they're being collected and put in the same school. All right, next we have the Saga Volumes. So we have Saga Volume 1, Saga Volume 2, Saga Volume 3, and Saga Volume 4. The fifth volume comes out this month in September. I'm not sure. I thought it was the 19th, but it could be wrong. I cannot wait to read it. This is a sci-fi adult graphic novel uh, series. If you have not started it yet, what are you waiting for? All right, next I have Outcast, Volume 1, Darkness Surrounds Him by Kirkman and Azacita. Azacita. And this is kind of like a guy who can, I, th I think he sees ghosts. I can't remember now, but I did enjoy it. And then I have American Vampire by Scott Snyder and Stephen King. And the illustrations are by Raphael Albuquerque. I really, really like this. This is a historical fiction vampire adult graphic novel with like the old west and also like the 20s like it, it goes from a whole bunch of different decades I I really really liked it I gave this a five star I can't wait to read the second one then I have Dr. Jackal and Mr. Hyde I gave this three stars it's just like the original and then I have Shutter Island by Christian Demeter and, you know, written by Denise Lehan. Um, I really enjoyed this graphic novel. I gave it a five star. I've also read the original, which I also gave four or five stars. And then I have Larry Chovaka's Life So Far. This is not a graphic novel, but I did show you guys before that there is pictures. I didn't know where to stick it since it's the same heightened size of a graphic novel. I just stuck it there. And lastly, I have The Sandman by Neil Gaiman. This is Volume 1, Preludes and Nocturnes. I absolutely love this series. I can't wait to start the second one. So that is the rest of that section. On to these books here which I will put in a different video. This will be uh, part two. I know I'm watching and I will talk to you soon. Bye!